Welcome to Binary Jazz. Uh, we don't even know how to do a podcast anymore. We've been we've been away for so long. Uh, Allison is in a completely different time zone. Province, <laughs> uh, nice. a, a different part of the country, the land that we all know as Canada. Uh, totally different coast, uh, and. Uh, yeah, there's been some, I don't know, weather happening, I guess, in various places. And Ooh, I don't know. It's been hot, hasn't it? Hot. That's like an understatement. It's now a normal temperature here. Um, I mean, it's been over 100 degrees every day here for I don't even know how long. Wow, really? Yeah. The fires of hell are raining down on Salt Lake City. But we haven't gotten up to, to Portland heat wave uh, temperatures. It hasn't gotten into the hundred and teens. Yeah. yeah. At least not in Salt Lake. In Southern Utah, I'm sure we've gotten that high. We got up to, I think, 109. Um, which is like very not, <laughs> like no one was happy about it because it's not supposed to happen here. <laughs> I mean, my car yeah. thinks that it was like 106 the last couple of days. I don't know how much I believe it, but it's certainly, I mean, when you go out and it's fully dark and it's still really hot, you know, it's hot. Yeah. Like we would, we would wake up and it would be, let me do some translation. It would be probably like 82 and it would be seven in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And rising rapidly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, at that point, our Airbnb did not have air conditioning. Yeah, yeah, because because uh, coastal cities don't know how to deal with weather. Yeah, and they were just, and I felt so bad because I like emailed the Airbnb people, and I was just like, I know, I, I like, I, I knew the Airbnb didn't come with air mm -hmm. conditioning, and I'm recognizing that. <laughs> but also, do you have a fan? <laughs> um, and they gave us fans, which is really or nice. anything. Yeah. yeah, anything. I was like, a frozen washcloth? Like, <laughs> take anything. Just get a bag of peas and put it over your head, yeah. Honestly, we were doing all the weird, like, home remedies for heat that people were <laughs> suggesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll do them all. It was, um, so we were up in, in Yellowstone, and we had, it's funny, because the place was called a cabin, but it was actually sort of like a, a mobile home like one of the, those trailer home sort of deals um, that was, that had cra crappy uh, wood paneling, like fake wood pa paneling to make it look like a cabin. Mm -hmm. um, didn't fool us. Uh, but um, yeah, they didn't, they didn't have air conditioning. They had little heating units, but like, um, but for the most part, like other than the first day where it had probably been just like sitting in the sun for, you know, 24, 48 hours and it had been warm up there um that it was pretty warm that first day and we just opened windows but after that it was okay uh and then it rained like half the time we were there uh which is not actually as bad as it seems considering how hot it is elsewhere um you were in yellowstone the same time a uh, friend another friend of mine was in yellowstone uh interestingly enough and I, I sent him a message and asked how things were going uh and he said you know we like east coast so he, they were getting up at like 4 30 or 5 in the morning yes. you know so basically keeping their name well keeping their normal east coast schedule and uh you know, heading into the park early and you know, that like, would be yeah that would be beat the crowds and the weather yeah because because then you can get there for like the earlier uh eruptions of things it seemed like we missed the timing on a lot of things because they were just earlier than we were able to get into the park yeah like it was it was like pre-10 and like by the time we got ourselves together and my parents together um like it was you know, after 10, we're trying to hit one or two yeah. things in the afternoon. That's how it is with my family. It's just getting us all out the door. Is yeah. Like, it's a production. <laughs> I, I have to lower the AC in here. Now we've been talking about heat. I'm like, I'm sweating <laughs> thinking. Well, about as it. you do that, uh, I probably should explain what the show is. Uh, this oh, is a podcast. Have we not covered that yet? No. Uh, wherein there are three people. Uh, me, I'm Jazz Sequence on the internet. There's Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet. And uh, we talk about a thing. Uh, generally, Allison brings a topic, and Gary and I argue over whether our definition of the topic is better. I guess um, we don't really argue; we mostly just bullshit. Um, but that's that's pretty much the show. All right. And often we done. are both wrong. Yeah. Almost, almost always. 
Did we take two weeks off or three weeks off? We took three Many, weeks off. I don't know. Something. Mm-hmm. An, an amount we of weeks. Okay. Probably um, three. Okay. Probably three. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels longer because, well, Allison, like in a totally different place in the world, you know? I don't know why it feels longer. From an undisclosed island. Undisclosed island. Yeah. An island location. (laughs) Oh my gosh. If you're in an island, like, does that make you like the, uh, like, like, is it like a villain's island? Like, you have to enter through a cave underwater? Yes. (sighs) Have you (laughs) seen. Have you seen uh, the History Channel series alone? Of course, it's a villain's island. <laughs> the place, oh, yes, that, I have. That place I wants to kill you. just watched season. Yeah. yeah. Where the people, like, it was like 100 days. No spoilers. I'm only on, we're no only spoilers. like, we're only yeah, into no season two. We're almost at the end of season two, but we're only on season okay. two. I actually, I, yeah, I still haven't been able to watch it, but um, I think I'm okay with that. Like, I want to go camping up north at some point, so. I mean, yeah. I, I, I guarantee they're picking the worst time of year for these people to start. You know, like if you go up there and during the summer, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. I'm sure, it's lovely. About, <laughs> think about the 100 day season, though. Like, what stretch of 100 days would you pick up there? Uh, start at the end of winter as the temperatures are starting to warm and then yeah. go as long as you freaking can. Yeah. Yeah. Would you get, like, in 100 days, would you circle back around and start getting cold again? probably not if you started early enough yeah I mean, maybe a little i mean naturally bit. for this show they did for the show they started like oh it's nice and temperate and in two weeks it's gonna suck yeah and then <laughs> the rest of the season's terrible and sorry <laughs> i mean i'm guessing there's summers the summers up there are probably pretty 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 temperate uh which means that like if you go there like the beginning of summer and you're expecting it to be like hot then it's gonna be i mean yeah. the hottest ever got when we were in yellowstone was like maybe 70s but most of the time it was like rainy and and sort of like 60s and 50s and so like if you start at that kind of weather uh and just kind of go downhill from there and kind of start at the peak of summer what was the drive time for you um it's about five and a half hours from here to uh west yellowstone yeah i i i asked because i kind of remember i we flew into salt lake city when I, when I went to Yellowstone, I don't know, 15 years ago, 15 years ago. That's about right. Uh, and, um, and like my luggage was delayed and the airline was like, oh, we'll bring it to you. And I'm like, well, okay, I'm staying like the North entrance of Yellowstone. They're like, uh, can we give you a credit to sit here and wait for it? <laughs> sure. So, uh, cause it like the delivery time was going to be stupid for him. So, uh, so I, we waited around, uh, and then, uh, and then we, so in any case, we ended up getting like to the uh, West entrance, like sometime around midnight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we, when we went in, um, the passage to go to the north entrance, uh, they were doing road work. So we had to go mm-hmm. all the way around the loop the other way. Mm-hmm. We got to some spot where there was like a traffic light, or not a traffic light, a stop sign. Uh, and it was, I mean, at this point, it was probably, you know, it was well after midnight. Uh, and I was coming from the East Coast. I don't know what that was in, you know, like body time. Like we were confused. And we stopped and this um, wolf like walked out. And it like stared over the head hood of the car at us, of this rental mm-hmm. car. And mm-hmm. I, I'm like, holy shit, do you see how big that thing is? Oh, yeah. Wait, way to go, Carrie. Awesome. <laughs> it's okay. She's engaged in the iPad. So <laughs> we'll rot her brain with the iPad instead of the language I teach her. Killing it this morning. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it was, it was just amazing how, you know, right? It was amazing how, um, just how huge it was. And, uh, and that was like my first exposure to an animal in Yellowstone. And I, my jaw dropped and I think I picked it up a week later or so when we left. Uh, we saw on our, on our last day there, um, on our way into the park, um, we saw a bear and a coyote within, I don't know, a hundred feet of each other. Um, so they must've wow. been going after something. There is the bear is sort of yeah. like, along the side of the road and then um like just in the trees and then like an ambulance or something came or no it was a ranger with its uh, but with its uh, alarm on siren on and it came up the road and so that sort of spooked the bear and it kind of went further into the into the woods but then like a few minutes later a coyote also spooked by the sound kind of like bounded across the road and like right by us and we saw um like a bunch of bison uh one wanted to like come right up to the car uh was like three feet away from the car that was that was both awesome and a little bit terrifying yeah 
my first exposure to, I, apparently this is the bison episode. My first exposure to bison, uh, I was probably in, I don't know, middle school, maybe high school. I don't know where we were, somewhere in the Great Plains. And we were in a, uh, uh, like a, a minivan. It was a Ford Aerostar. My spot at that age was the very back bench seat. And um, we came like over this rise and there was this huge herd and they were covered, you know, they were like across the road. My dad was like, well, all right. And just kept driving. And, uh, and he stopped because there was one in front of us and there was a car coming the other way. We couldn't drive around. And I look at my window and there's like one, like looking down to me. I'm like, this thing is bigger than the van. Like, you know, in the back seat, I was again, another big animal it was looking at me. That was amazing. I was in awe. Apparently that's all the animal needs to do is make eye contact with me. And I'm mm-hmm. turn into jello. All they need to do. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Do we do we want to do topic or do we just want to? Yeah, let's do topic. If we have a topic, the Yellowstone. Do we have a topic? Um, I have a topic and I have a really small quiz. Okay. Um, so the topic is imbroglio. Natalie, right? She had that <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm not. There's even... a sports metaphor for that one. I don't I'm, know. I'm is, not but... ready for anything. Oh man. The, the... Uh, but let me go Imbrolio. back. Imbroglio. Um, is it, it's a, I'm going to ask you to spell thinking, it for me in a minute, but not right now. I'm thinking of a dessert. It's not a dessert. What am I thinking of? Keep keep vamping. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, speaking of dumb desserts, <laughs> I, I, the other day, we weren't, but I, I have to get to this because I, uh, I just, I made a bad choice. Um, so I, I made tacos uh, on Sunday and I went to the grocery store to get some jalapenos and I don't even remember what else. And uh, I walked past like the dessert, sec- dessert section and I'm like, oh, flan, I should get a container of grocery store flan. Like that would be fun. Um, I was wrong, I-, I guess, is where this is headed. Cause I, after dinner, I'm like, does anybody want flan? And resoundingly everyone was like, no, what, <laughs> what? No, of course not. So I, I, you know, scooped this overly watery juicy flan into a bowl and i'm like hmm um and my sister-in-law was like sure i'll try some brave uh, soul <laughs> yeah um short story boring grocery store flan is probably not the best choice i've made not the worst choice i've made but it's not a choice i'll make again um i right. it's still like half the containers in there and every night after dinner around us like it's okay to throw it away like, do you want oh yeah. it'll, it'll happen I know, yeah, I know. But every every after dinner, she's like, "Do you want some flan?" I'm like, "I I get it. It was I get it." Embrolio, E M B R O L I O. Is that correct? No. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, I There's am, a G in there. Yeah. I am. I am B R O G L I O. It really, it that. really is I'm Natalie Embrolio. <laughs> Yeah, popular popular singer in the '90s, Natalie Imbroglio. Do you know that song's a cover? What song? What is what is the hit? Remind me. I'm torn, I'm blanking. Torn. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's a cover by like yeah. who was it originally by? It's like wait, a, let me guess. It's gonna be something crazy like it's like the Beach Elton Boys. <laughs> no, it's gonna it's gonna be something like it's gonna be like one of those Prince songs that was never re- released, like uh, "Nothing Compares to You" or something. Like like we all think it's it's oh yeah, it's Sinead O'Connor. It's her 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 you know keynote song, and it's actually just a Prince song. It's nothing. Is that, is that true? Yeah, "Nothing Compares to You" is a Prince song. You? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why there's a two and a U because Prince doesn't spell out those those words. Today I learned things I learned, um, but no, it's it's nothing that exciting. It's just a, a Australian band that came out with it first and got it. Then it worked. He covered it and made it actually successful. Did it actually good? Yeah. Uh, so back to the topic at hand, Imbroglio. Uh huh. It's a chess move. Oh yes, mm-hmm. yes. The the embroglio. The, there's the king's embroglio and also the variant, uh, the queen's embroglio. I feel like that's probably true though, because there are so many. I've 
Yes, ma'am. What? Wonderful. Hey, what does imbroglio mean? What does imbroglio mean? You don't know? I appreciate her honesty, though. I don't know. Her, it's it's great because I say silly stuff to her, and her reaction is like, "What?" <laughs> so I'll like it, at meals, I'll uh, I'll be like, "Did you want any more of this um, pickled herring?" As I'm holding up like strawberries or whatever, and she'll go, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and I can't get enough of it. I don't know what, how she keeps patience with me, honestly. Because she's forced the, to. <laughs> she yeah she hasn't considered the alternative i mean it's the answer like she hasn't considered yeah. that she like you could make another choice um Rhonda and the two olders are uh are out of town till sunday uh they left this morning so i'm pretty excited about um we're gonna go to the game store this afternoon and find a game that she and i can play for the weekend a new game for her uh, there's a thai restaurant across the week, the street so i'm gonna pick up some food there because no one else in my family is really feeling thai these days so mm. i'm gonna get spicy curry get all the tie yeah i i might have to get like uh dinner tonight and lunch tomorrow and mm -hmm. so your go-to like Sunday. your go-to like bachelor meal is like spicy things because your family's like not into it chris what's your go-to like i get to eat this because no one else has to weigh in on this decision uh i like like american comfort food like burgers and fries and stuff um which yeah, that, that's the thing. That would be my go-to, I think. Um, there's a couple places that are like, it's like one of the, it's like this, that's that thing where it's like, what's it? Uh, from Prue's, Prue's thing on, on uh, Bake Off where she's like, you know, this is worth the calories. You know, right. it's not, it's not worth the calories. Nine, not most <laughs> of the time, but I'm, I'm, that's the thing that I'm going to do. My, what's what's your bachelorette go to solo um, that's the word i couldn't remember usually my favorite type of pizza which has pineapple on it um oh. robin doesn't like pineapple let alone mm -hmm. on pizza mm -hmm. okay pineapple across the board he doesn't eat so yeah i feel like like i like i like pineapple on pizza too and i don't know like i know that there's this like um and i like pineapple period um, yeah. and I know there's this like divide and I don't like, is it like, is it like a coastal, is it like a California thing or is it, is it like a sign that we're from California that we like pineapple on pizza? I never thought about it like that. I don't think so. I mean, I know, I mean, there, when I went to Hawaii, there's lots of pineapple on things in Hawaii. So like, obviously, you know, because it's tropical. So like I, but like, yeah. I just think people have a, di have difficulty with warm fruit that's not yeah not in like a pie or something yeah that's that might be it i was gonna say like i it, it may not i it may be a coastal thing but i don't think it's west coast east coast like i think it's like you know coastal slash inland because mm. mm. i mean in florida i think generally like there are people who are like i don't know i have a pizza yeah but i think generally like it's pretty normal at least the areas of florida i was running in i don't think people are very opposed to it because there's plenty of pineapple in florida probably probably stolen from Hawaii, but <laughs> someplace. Um, yeah. So, but I, I think inland, like, I think that's probably that concept. I would, I, I will, I will stereotype and say it's a Midwestern thing to not like pineapple. And pizza. <laughs> good, good, good stereotyping. Uh, Thank you. So imbroglio. Um, we lost all of our mid uh, Western listener. Western listener. <laughs> mid listener. Uh, you said it, it was a chess move. Tell, tell me about this chess move. It tells you right there. Hold on, I'm, I'm fixing a, a thing. Oh, can I, can, I, can I finish this call and then we can look at it? Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what it was. Um, it's, uh, it's a situation where you purposely um, uh, pin uh the piece so that they can't move like they're behind a pawn but can't move left or right um so they're in Brulia behind this pawn and either way they move they're going to be in a capturable position so if it were the king it would not be it wouldn't be in check but uh but if they move they would be moving into check and if it were the queen well you just don't want to blunder your queen 
was an uncomfortable sentence. <laughs> Uh, I think, so if we break it down, uh, we have oleo, which is obviously relating to eyes. <laughs> which is a kind of oil. <laughs> that's, that's relating different. to eyes? Yeah. Oleo is relating to eyes? Yes, yes. Okay. That's why you Keep ogle. This. That's why you ogle. Um, <laughs> ogle, ogle happens with your eyes. And Im, 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 Imbra, obviously, is, is related <laughs> to like related to like broiling or like cooking or like something that is immersed in some sort of hot liquid. So imbroglio the episodes are our worst. It is. <laughs> imbroglio is obviously the process of boiling eyeballs. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Food episodes I, are our I, worst. I didn't I didn't know where that was going when I started, but that's where I wound up. Sorry to hear that. Uh, <laughs> I, I still think it, I still think it's an action of some sort, like not a boiling action. To, to imbroglio, imbroglio. Yeah, it, that's how. That's how that was Tris the key reason I brought this to the table. Yeah, is Allison. Like, Allison is here like, for the Italian accent. Yeah, <laughs> imbroglio. <laughs> like, could you do the accent without a camera? Would it work? I could do it, but I wouldn't be able to do the, the finger pinch. <laughs> would you do it anyway, though? Would do it off? anyway. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I would do it anyway. Right. Yeah. That's you might, you might not hear it. Other phrases that you do a hand motion with automatically. Everything. But like, hmm. It's paired with. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was, I was, um, I was talking when we were in Yellowstone and I was trying to describe like where we were going to go to my parents over the phone or something. I was like mapping out different locations of the park with my hand. And then I realized I'm doing this on the phone. Like, like obviously he's not going to see like, okay, so we're going to be here and then you can go up to there and then it's going to be over there. And that's where the stuff is. You know, he doesn't see those movements that I'm making with my hand. Wait, was there cellular coverage in the park? Do you remember? Not really. I mean, there was uh, enough for text messages to go through in some places and calls to go through in some places, but it was, it's, it's super spotty. Um, and even though it yeah. told me that I had LTE, like at Old Faithful, we didn't have data. Like there was no data. I, basically i mean but like i i mean you, you don't know. need it there but i was just curious like we, i knew I that going like... in and it was it's always disappointing though because they've got this like um they've got their app and the app updates with all like the the um geyser oh. predictions and stuff um and like you can pretty sure they didn't have an app 15 years ago yeah well last time they had an app and they had a map but the map only worked when you had data um, so that wasn't helpful. So they've updated it so you can download all the data. So you can at least get all the map and all the information about the different places. Um, so I did that prior to going in. So at least like we could see where stuff was and whatever, and you would get like, and I would get like the last known prediction and it would store that. So like it would still yeah. have the stuff from whatever this morning or that morning. Um, but yeah, once you're in there, you're kind of SOL as far as like trying to figure out what things are, are expected to go off when, um, Oh, I loved, I, re, I have fond memories of, I don't uh, at the mud pots, we were part yep. of the mud pots and having this enormous map laid on the hood of the car <laughs> and debating where we were going to go next and like, like sort of hedging our bets on what, what, what are options we're worth seeing or should we head further east into the beautiful fields out there and boy, that's a, that's just a magic spot in the world. Yeah. So my parents hadn't, my, my stepmom had never been ever. My dad had only been when he was like 15 or maybe younger. Um, so, uh, and he said like, basically when, when he went, it was kind of like you drive up to Old Faithful and that was pretty much it. Like there wasn't really much else. Um, so we kind of were tour guides and we're like, you know, cause we've been like a whole bunch of times. Um, yeah. So like, okay, we're gonna do this, this, and this, and then we're gonna do this, this, and this, and then we're gonna do this other stuff, and kind of get a collection of different types of things that you that, that Yellowstone is good for. So like, kind of cool being being able to kind of 
show off the places that like going to the places that we that we know are cool and avoiding the places that we know are not really worth the time we did i did like a five i i guess more than that a five plus mile hike i don't know early one morning with my dad like we went in extremely early uh and in the mist we came across this uh pond area and there were beavers working on a dam and just like standing there in the distance and watching the beaver i you know i'd never seen a beaver before in my life so uh it was uh, ever so briefly because there's a delivery person that looks very confused outside our house <laughs> sure we'll be here in the meantime we can talk about embrolia embrolia uh, yeah and then it will be time for the for the definition um we actually have yeah. feedback uh which is interesting. Oh. I don't actually know. It's feedback with a genre-nator, and I'm not sure if it's if we should uh, read it or not. Oh no! Is it negative feedback? No, it's 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 like I want to do a thing, and I'm not sure how to do it, and and oh, yeah, yeah. I I uh, I forget the genre-nator is a thing, but I have it in a couple channels and other Slack teams I'm in, mm -hmm. and. Uh, specifically in a channel on a slack that i'm in that has a channel called um good band names like <laughs> if you're creating good band names you need a genre I mean, to you go don't with have it. the genre nader yeah here you go yeah it's like a no-brainer like it i feel like it was you know that band makes yeah honky tonk discotheque yeah steampunk tuba quartet <laughs> um yeah so imbroglio uh you were saying that you think it's an action to embroil. I do. It might be a way you prepare a food. Like ah, yes. Leo, the pasta. Well, then I, yeah, I feel like it's it's dunking in, in boiling water. Oh, maybe I am just falling into your definition. Of it. <laughs> we, <clears throat> I've, I've, I've maybe, maybe I'm embroglio, sure I... maybe embroglio is not the act of, maybe it's like, you know, those, there's, there's, there's like those pasta cookers. Have you ever seen like yeah. in, like the fancy restaurants where like it's a big tall thing filled with filled with boiling water and you stick the the spaghetti in like you know long like lace so you don't have to break yeah. it yeah so yes. it's an, that's an imbroglio. I, I I for the first time in the history of the show I'm in complete agreement. That's obviously what it is. Obviously, like, that's else. the imbroglio. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, we can let Allison know she's back. That we have exactly the, uh... we we we've, we've nailed it. Yeah, we know exactly what it is. That's funny. Um, so have I told you about NASCAR club? NASCAR club? No. Yes. Oh, this is hysterical. So Tyler, age 10, uh, is very into NASCAR because it is just the culture around here, which is fine. Okay. Uh, and um, so he created a club. And so on Tuesday nights for an hour, not an hour for 30 minutes we as a family sit down and he gives like a summary of the last weekend's race where the upcoming race is there's a section called track talk that tells us about the track uh but in addition to that there are driver reports that he started assigning after the first week so i've had to do like a report every tuesday on different drivers in nascar uh which the is nascar hysterical. club is like a, a a family club about nascar yes so this last week i did a report on a guy called kale yarborough uh, and, uh, it's beautiful I because I actually it's heard like, that name. It, so, uh, he is famous because in 1979 at the Daytona 500, the first 500 mile race aired on television. Like there's all this fascinating history that doesn't matter at all, but the first <laughs> 500 mile race aired on television. Uh, he was trying to pass for first place and wrecked and wrecked the guy that was in first. So they came to like arrest in the infield, uh, and got out and got into a fist fight live on television. And that is like the beginning of like NASCAR being aired on a regular basis. Nice. And people were like, I got to get more of that. Yeah. Like he and Bob, uh, Bobby, Donnie, Allison got into this fist fight. And, uh, and that's like, and also obviously like, um, Hey, there's this stereotype around NASCAR, like that age, like the late seventies, he raced for a guy, like a team owner's name was uh, Banjo Matthews. <laughs> it's these, like the names and like the history are just, I, I crack up. It's baffling. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't like imagine something more bizarre than some of these stories. It's wonderful. Uh, it's also sick, but 
so we have uh, we have determined what what imbroglio actually is, Allison. So so you can tell not us- just that we've also determined we are correct. So yes. go ahead and explain. So it, you Chris. can tell us what <laughs> you think it is, but our answer is obviously the right one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it is an extremely confused, complicated, or embarrassing situation. Oh, <laughs> that's a long way to say life. And the ar- the archaic definition, which I thought was really funny, is just a confused heap. <laughs> Confused heap. So you fall into an imbroglio? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I like that definition more. Yeah. And the example they gave was Watergate. Okay. So I just feel a like... weird, overly yeah. complicated, confusing thing. Okay. Is Watergate seems so passe these days. It's like a time, though. Yeah. <laughs> Like they just broke in and stole stuff from the other political party. That's all. They didn't like storm the Capitol building wearing horns or anything so bizarre like that. Quiz or should we hold off? Uh, we've got four minutes. I think we've got time for a quiz, okay. especially when Ga- if Gary is uh, distracted. I, I have to take a quiz. <laughs> Do you want to help me with the quiz? Okay, sit in my lap here. Come here. It's a good one. Okay. So the title of the quiz is you're going to be identifying quotes, but it's Dolly Parton or Dolly Ooh. Lama. Oh, this is a good one. Dolly Parton or Dolly Lama. You like the Dolly binary Parton, jazz right? quizzes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Wow. Chris? Uh, yeah, this is a different. He's pulling up a tally sheet to anyway. see who, yeah. who wins. Um, okay. The first quote is remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. Uh, Dolly Parton. Dolly Lama. You said Parton? Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. You Dalai got it? <laughs> Thank you. Dolly Lama. Yeah. People take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they're not on your road doesn't mean they've gotten lost. Parton. Dolly Parton. Yeah, Dolly Parton. Yeah. Yeah? Dolly yeah. Lama. Oh, I was ready to score one for both of us. <laughs> Storms make trees take deeper roots. Uh, Dolly Parton. Uh, Dalai Lama. Parton. <laughs> I, I had I, I almost went I almost did the other thing just because just because like if I got it if Gary was wrong then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a politician and I don't want to be. Uh, Dolly Parton. Yeah, Dolly Parton. Correct. If you think you're too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. Dolly Parton. Yeah. Dolly I can hear Parton. her saying it actually in my head. <laughs> Dolly Lama. <laughs> Damn it. Darn it. Dang it. Snap. <laughs> we cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust the sails. Oh boy. This is Dolly was a crap, Lama. Honestly. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Yes. Out of six billion humans, the troublemakers are just a handful. Dolly Parton. Is it though? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Dolly Parton. Dolly Lama. (laughs) I should have gone. I should have gone with my gut. (laughs) Thus concludes the quiz. Okay, so Gary wins with three to two. I never guessed the Dalai Lama. That was my strategy. That was your strategy. That's true. <laughs> yeah, and I should have. I should have done Dalai really, Lama. I just feel like I could hear. Should have done Dalai Lama at the last one. What is what is what does Miss Dolly Parton do for you? Uh, she's my friend. She likes to send books to me. Mm-hmm. She likes to send books to me. Yep. Do you know where your last Dolly Parton book is? I don't know. Oh, okay. I was gonna see if you wanted to get it and show it to your friend, to my friends, your friends too. Yeah. 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 That's con- what does the Dalai quiz? Lama do for you? <laughs> yeah, what what does the Dalai Lama do for you? Uh, I don't know. Do you know what the Dalai Lama is or who the Dalai Lama is? I don't know. You don't know? It's okay. Maybe we can learn about that this weekend. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like a good weekend yeah. project. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have to put corn out for the, in the squirrel feeder. Um, that's one of our other plans this weekend. And what else do we have to do this weekend? Anything? What do we have to fix around the house? I'm actually hoping she has an answer because I don't know. <laughs> Should we work on anything? 
So shy all of a sudden. I know. <laughs> like now you're on camera, now you're quiet. Is that the deal? Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. I love this hair, right? Yeah. I have I like a haircut hair. tomorrow. It's gonna be so magical. <laughs> wow. When's the last time you got a haircut? It's been over a year. Yeah. Did you do your yeah. bangs yourself? Yeah, I can't shoot. <laughs> yeah, I mean I I was I figured. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.